If you just bought the Samsung Galaxy A23, you are in the right place. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up the phone and some really cool tweaks you'll want to know. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guy, Wayne. In the video today, I'll be walking you through how to set up your Samsung Galaxy A23. We'll be going over some basic things like how to connect to Wi-Fi, how to transfer all your data from your old phone to your new phone, and also some other really cool tweaks you'll wanna make in setting up your phone. So make sure you watch the entire video so you don't miss any of the important tweaks I'm gonna share in this video. And also, wanna share one quick note. This phone did not come with a wall charger in the box, which is frustrating, but I have two charger recommendations. The first one is gonna be this Anchor Nano charger right here. Super awesome charger, it supports fast charging and it works with the cable that came in the box. The second charger is another charger by Anchor, but it actually has two ports. It has a type C charging port, which works with the cable in your box. It also has a full size USB, which you can use to charge your other devices. So I'll make sure to leave a link below in the description of where you can purchase these. And without further ado, let's jump into the video. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna go over is how to connect to Wi-Fi. So when you get home, you wanna to connect to your home network. What you'll need to do is swipe down from the top of the screen. And in the upper left corner, you'll find your Wi-Fi icon. First, make sure it's lit up in blue. If it's gray like this, it means your Wi-Fi is turned off. If it's blue, it means that it's on. Simply just tapping turns it off. Tapping again is what turns it on. We're gonna hold down on that button for one second. That's gonna take us to our Wi-Fi menu. And from here, you're gonna look for your Wi-Fi network. And once you find it, you're gonna tap on it. Mine is the Meatloaf 2.4. It's an inside joke in case you've seen the movie Wedding Crashers. Hit the like button if you've seen the movie Wedding Crashers. Uh, we're gonna enter our password and then we'll be linked up with our network. So password is in, I'm gonna hit connect. And now we are connected to our network. Next, I'm gonna go over how to transfer all your files from your old phone to the new phone. So first, what you'll wanna do on your new phone, swipe down from the top of the screen and in the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel we're then going to swipe up and we're gonna to go to the section accounts and backup. We're gonna tap there and then we're gonna to go to the option that says bring data from old device. Tap agree and it's going to install it's gonna download and install the Samsung Smart Switch app, which is the app you would use if you'd like to transfer data from an old phone. So that's downloading and it's gonna download pretty quickly if you're on Wi-Fi. It might take a little bit longer if you're just on your cellular network, but either way, it'll download pretty quick. We're gonna tap allow, allow again, basically giving it permission to access your files. And then on your old phone, what you'll need to do, and just to show you, we're gonna go home. On your old phone, look for the Play Store icon Tap on Play Store, come to the top of the screen in the search box, and you wanna type in Samsung Smart Switch, or you can tap on the microphone, Samsung Smart Switch. This will help you do a quick search. This is the app you're looking for. You're gonna hit open, or you're gonna download it first, and then you're gonna open it. So you'll need to have that open on the old phone and on the new phone. Okay, so I have Smart Switch now installed on both phones, and this is what it's gonna look like. So on the old phone, when you open the app, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna transfer with a cable or wirelessly? Um, you do need a special adapter in order to use a cable, so you'll probably need to go ahead and just do the wireless option. It will take a little bit longer, but as long as you keep the phones together, you'll be fine. Tap on wireless. And then on the uh, A23, we're gonna tap on receive data. And it's gonna ask you, what type of phone are you transferring the data from? In this case, we're transferring from a Android phone. So we're gonna tap here. We're gonna tap wireless. Then we're gonna tap on disconnect. It's gonna temporarily disconnect from your Wi-Fi, so it can connect directly to your phone. We're gonna hit accept. It's gonna send a code for them to link up together. And just that fast, both phones have linked up. 
And now it's going to scan the old phone to see what data is there. And then on the new phone, you'll see some options here. It'll say, hey, do you want to transfer everything? Do you want to transfer only certain things? Um, just accounts, calls, contacts, and messages, or do you want to do a custom transfer? So in this case, uh, I'm going to do everything. So keep it on the everything option, hit next. And then from there, it's going to connect and uh, you'll see a pop-up on the old phone and it's going to ask, is it okay to uh, copy your Google account? So that means your Gmail, um, accounts like that. Is it okay to transfer those contacts over to this new phone? You're going to hit copy. So it'll copy those accounts over and then it'll start transferring everything else that's on the phone. So that is the process to transfer all your files and just know that it's going to take a while. So what I encourage you to do is start this transfer at night so that you won't need to use the phone and you won't need to take the phones apart because again, the phones will need to stay close together in order for the transfer to happen smoothly. Let's now move on to the next section, which is I'm gonna show you how to keep your screen on longer. And this is a super easy tweak we're gonna make in the settings. We're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen again, upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel and make sure you go to the display section Swipe up and go to screen timeout. And we want to change this from 30 seconds to at least two minutes. Now this way your screen will stay on without you having to touch it every 30 seconds. Super helpful tweak and it just improves your experience with the phone. Next, let's talk about essential apps. So one thing with Samsung phones, um, and it's a really cool thing they've been doing is they're installing less of their Samsung apps because they want to leave more room for you to install what you want to be on the phone. But because of this, there's a couple of downsides. So for example, normally there's some extra apps that you get on the phone that are Samsung apps that they don't put on the phone anymore. So I'm gonna show you how to download the essential apps. And these are just gonna be uh, other really cool Samsung apps that are gonna go great with your phone. So tap on the Galaxy Store, and it should be on the home screen. If you don't see it there, you can always swipe up from the home screen and look for the little Galaxy app icon. Next, we're gonna go to the upper right corner. We're gonna tap on the magnifying glass, and you're gonna type in Samsung. And by typing in Samsung, you're gonna get a list of all of the Samsung specific apps that they have created for their phones. And I'm gonna show you what are some of the best ones for you to download. So first, Samsung Music. Tap on the little arrow to the right and that's how you download the app. This is Samsung's music player that is designed for their phone, it works great. If you're transferring music from an old phone, this is a great app to use to manage your music. You'll already have a Samsung Health app on the phone, but if you don't have it, you can always tap on the down arrow right here to install it on the phone. Let's keep swiping here. This is Samsung's email app. Again, works great, very clean interface. Um, definitely encourage you to download that one. We'll keep going here. Again, a lot of these should be on the phone, but if you notice the icon to the right, if it's a play button, it means it's already installed on your phone. But if it's a down arrow, that means that it's not installed and you can download it right now. So most of these we already have. This is another great app. It's Samsung's video library and it organizes all of your videos and just gives you a cleaner interface to look at all the videos that you've taken on your phone. So those are the essential apps and I think you'll like some of those extra ones that we just downloaded. Next, I wanna show you how to change your wallpaper, which is the home screen picture. So if you find a blank spot on your home screen and just tap the, the screen, but keep your finger on the screen. Oh, see right now we're on a widget. So let's move a little bit more to the corner here, hold. This will bring up the menu that will allow you to access changing your wallpaper, downloading new themes, downloading widgets, or making other tweaks to your home screen settings. The first thing I wanna show you is the wallpaper and style section. Now, every phone comes with stock wallpapers, so if I tap on Browse My Wallpapers, 
it'll show you these are some of the featured and stock wallpapers that come with the phone. You can also go to your gallery and you can select a picture that you've taken and make that picture your background. Or you have some other really cool graphical backgrounds down here and some solid color backgrounds here too. You also have what is called wallpaper services. This is another really cool exclusive Samsung feature. They have these different uh, wallpaper packs and the wallpapers will rotate um, on, you know, usually sometimes it's like every few hours or you can have them rotate every few days, but this will just give your wallpaper uh, a nice look. Now, if you don't like any of these options, you can also tap on Galaxy Themes. Now, if I go back one step here to this main menu, you also have a shortcut to themes right here. This will take you to the Samsung theme store where you'll be able to find more wallpapers to download. And I want to show you how to navigate this. So at the bottom, you'll have themes, wallpapers, and icons. Now, what separates a wallpaper and a theme? Well, a wallpaper is simply a background for your home screen. A theme is a, a background wallpaper and it changes the color of all your icons. So just to show you, this is one wallpaper pack and if you were to download this one, it changes the pictures of your icons. It changes your background of the phone. And as you swipe over, your lock screen is going to be different. Your dialer is going to be different. Your text messages will be different. It's going to change everything about the phone, give it a whole new look. So um, one thing to keep in mind, if you're looking for just a cool wallpaper or if you want a completely different design, for your phone, this is how you'll separate if you want a theme or a wallpaper. Now, one cool little tip, I always say try to find the free wallpapers first, and if not, then look for the paid ones. So there is a section that says the top free themes. I can tap on this arrow and look through a list of all the popular free themes and try these before I go to the paid themes. That's at our back button. I can also go up to the top here and, and select top and tap on all and change it to free. And it will show me even more free themes that are available. So again, look through all the free options first. And if you don't like those, you can always simply go back and look at the paid ones as well. Here you'll find your widgets and here you'll find your home screen settings. Now, you've got a couple of cool options in here. If you'd like to get more, more apps on your home screen, you can go to home screen grid and you can change the ratio from four by five to four by six or uh, five by five or five by six. This will give you more rows and more columns on your home screen. And you have a few other options in here to adjust as well. So always love to show you this so you know how to customize your phone. Lastly, I wanna show you how to set up a passcode and how to set up the fingerprint sensor so you can unlock the phone using your fingerprint. So what we're gonna do, swipe down from the top of the screen, upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel again. From here, we need to go to lock screen, or actually you can skip that and actually go to security and privacy. From here, you'll wanna go down to biometrics, and then you have two options. One, to set up facial recognition, which means when you bring the phone to your face, it will automatically unlock. Or you can set up a fingerprint to unlock the phone when you tap the, the power button. Let's do the fingerprint. Tap continue. Now, when you try to set up a fingerprint unlock or the, the facial unlock, it will always ask you to set a pin or passcode or pattern first as a backup uh, method. So let's go to PIN, and that will allow you to set a four digit passcode to protect your phone. I'm gonna make it just four zeros. Press continue, make it four zeros again. Please make yours harder than that, but make sure it's a number that you'll remember. So our PIN is now set up. Next, I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna tap on the home button here and I'm just gonna tap and release. And I'm gonna try to move my finger ever so slightly just so that the fingerprint uh, reader can learn my fingerprint and 
basically make it easier for when it's time to unlock the phone with my finger. So I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. Again, keep lifting and trying to put my finger back in slightly different positions so it can learn my finger. And just that fast, we're all done. Now, one recommendation I have is always add a second fingerprint. In the event that one of your hands is wet or oily, you can always switch hands and use a finger on that hand to unlock the phone. You would simply tap add to start the process over again. For the sake of the video, I'm not going to do it, but I encourage you to add a finger on your um, other hand. Let's hit done, hit agree, and now our phone is going to be set up to uh, unlock with our fingerprint. So I'm gonna lock it, tap the power button. If I try to swipe through, it's either gonna ask me to put in my four digit pin code or I'm gonna take my thumb, which is the fingerprint that I programmed, and I'm gonna tap the button and it's gonna unlock the phone. And just that easy, we were able to program a pin and our fingerprint to unlock the phone. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If it was, can you do me a few favors first? Hit that thumbs up button down below. That helps us with the video to become searched more and help it to reach more people. Also, can you leave a comment down below and let me know what was the most helpful thing that I went over in the video? I always love to hear your feedback because it helps me as a reviewer and as a tech guide to make sure I'm showing you relevant things that are gonna help you in using your device. And lastly, if you're not already a subscriber, can you hit that subscribe button so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Thanks again for watching. Once again, I'll have a link below in the description of where you can find a really awesome charger for this phone. It doesn't come with one in the box and I really want to encourage you to use quality chargers. Don't use a cheap charger or it could mess with your phone. You'll also find these two videos super helpful, so make sure you click on one and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again for watching, take care, and as always, have a good one.